Hi. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to our metrics model meeting. Um, today, we have a variety of things we have to talk about. Um, I think pull up the agenda. So thanks for somebody putting that together. We don't have a question today because <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I didn't have one. Wait, wait. Okay. You can tell us how you're doing today. Um, so Ruth added something here. I don't know quite what the context is for that, but um Yahui, I'm guessing you put this here. Is that right? Yeah, it's me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, why don't you talk about that? And then we can kind of go on to this, the second thing, which is about the work we're doing in this project, something that we've been talking about in the community for a little while and something that we also talked about in the board meeting. But why don't you go ahead and begin, Yui, okay? Sure. Maybe I can share my screen a little bit. Yeah. We'll make you co-host. Mm -hmm. Perhaps. Maybe, um, Elizabeth, can you make him co-host? Or you, we can just share a screen. Never mind. Uh, am I sharing? I think I'm sharing. You are sharing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Currently, I I open up the uh, Oasis Compass as as we uh achieved agreement like uh, one month ago. Uh, I plan to implement all the chaos metrics uh in in Compass. That's the first step, and also that people who have interest. And our chaos metrics, who could take try on with real data and the uh, and the, through the OSS compass. So we have um, uh, you know implement the first prototype uh, until now. So here we clicked the compass lab. Once we create a model, you can type the name. I mean the matrix model needs. Maybe we can start uh or something like this. That's one. Um some description. Public or non-public, that's based on your choice. Add metrics. Uh all those metrics. Uh I have to mention that uh, um, uh practitioner guide, some uh, those four or three models metrics has been implemented. On our first prototype, uh, we would like to use the um, bus factor and the uh, type of contributors and the uh, contributor count. As you can see that uh, we have a uh, marked with powered by chaos here. So which means they are exactly coming from uh, our metric, uh, chaos matrix. So you can choose Um, as you know, that our matrix model, you can calculate as a final score or, or or you can choose not. So if you choose not, then cal calculate. But if you want to choose one, uh, it's, uh, to summarize all the metrics into uh, the final score with the time series, uh, we put those two choices. So if you pick this calculate, we would uh, have you to choose the weight and the threshold and uh, using the default algorithm. But um, uh, if you choose not, that's fine. Let's say. And uh, from your lo local count, you can see my models here. And uh, because you already published it, so I don't know. It was a where it is. Yeah, that's one from Ehui. Yeah, that's the name I named it. So everyone who saw these models, um. If they got the try, would like to try, 
click this one, use the model for evaluation. So you can select the data size as you wish. You can choose whatever you want. For example, I don't know, choose one. Uh, if the, the project uh, are not existed in the compass, it will uh, index you to summarize a pull request. So you already uh, pick up one repositories conform. So they are processing. So all the metrics model you can share with someone with the with the people who would like to use that and someone would like to choose those models to take a try for for example practitioner guide they can click this when click this uh, link and uh, add um, whatever the project you want to take a try so that's all that's our first uh, prototype as you can see that uh, we use practitioner guide this one contributor sustainability my colleague had just created one models they publish uh, they publicate and uh, we add some description and uh, if we would like to use this model that's the same uh, same way to add any um, data size or projects you want yeah and uh, for now uh, i think uh, we will continually to add more metrics uh, from chaos and uh, our applied uh, by the end of next month we will pro uh, implement all the metrics from chaos on the uh, in, in compass and let people to create their own matrix model or to create some matrix model already already exists in the uh, chaos so Emma, this is amazing as always like every time you show your work and the work of your team it's amazing yeah. can i um can you okay so this is one of them is that right no yep. this yep. is practitioner guide okay for apache e-charts it looks like yep i have to mention that there are still some bugs exist because my my colleagues still are working on that to fix that but uh, i think uh by the end of this week, um, they will fix some big bugs. So finally, they will uh, released for everyone. But the, um, anyway, if right now they already uh, import. We already deployed this function on the Compass Live. So yeah. What are the people's thoughts? Uh, if you want to create a model, you can create here. Create a model yeah. by yourself. No matter you create from from the arrow to one, or you can create a model already existing somewhere. For example, from chaos, uh, just to copy, select the metrics defined in this model. And if you want to just take try, some model already existing this compass, you can find one. Yep. And and use this model for evaluation. And also, after you share, uh, after you uh, finish this model creation, you can share this link for anyone or attach the link to the chaos metrics model definition uh, part to let more people to take try on your models. Elizabeth Dunn. Yeah, this is really cool. I really like that you've pulled in some of the practitioner guides. Um, and the, the metrics associated with those. I think that's really cool. Yeah, this is really, really interesting and fantastic work. Um, yeah, I have other thoughts, but I'm still formulating them. So I don't want to say, um, but I, I, I love it. It's, it's really very, very good. So let me ask you a few questions, Yifui. So, um, <laughs> 
And I'll give you some background too, a little on these questions. So at the moment we have, um, let's say like 85 metrics that we have published in chaos. You know, some of them are trace data metrics and some of them are, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. not. So, okay, you're bringing that up. And so, yeah, yeah, we probably need to look at this list too, Elizabeth. I'm thinking we have, you know what I'm talking about? So basically, we, we have, of the 85 metrics, they're all in, in Markdown. Mm -hmm. And not every metric that we have is very well written. And the maintenance of those documents is pretty high. And so Elizabeth and I are working mm -hmm. through, here, if you can, can I share my screen for a second? Or do you want to show something up here? No. Okay. So... So this is in the, you know, the metric spreadsheet. You have access to this too. And so what we're doing is we have this long list of metrics, 86, 85 metrics that we have currently in the chaos project. And mm -hmm. basically we've gone through and identified if a metric is at least mentioned in a metric model would be one criteria. If it's mentioned in a practitioner guide, which could be a second criteria, or if it's in, you know, like our DEI event badging and project badging initiatives, if it's mentioned in those as well. We don't have a column for Compass, but we probably should. Um, and so what we're doing is trying to identify which metrics are not actually, from our perspective, deployed in any way, shape, or form. So for example, branch life cycle is not a metric that has shown up in any mm -hmm. model. It's not in any practitioner guide and it's not in badging. So for us, that would potentially be a candidate metric to archive. We wouldn't get rid of the links. We, the GitHub repository would stay there, um, but we just wouldn't display it as prominently on our own web page, just because the maintenance of all of these documents mm -hmm. is high. So this yeah, is- Yeah, I understand. Okay, so this is kind of what we're working on right now. So branch lifecycle is one you can see. SPDX document happens to be another one. Anyway, get off there. Number mm -hmm. new contributors happens to be one. So we're just we're just trying to reduce the list that we put on our web page, and we would mark wow. the documents that are not prominent on the web page. They would still be available, but we would just put this is mm. in archive state. And if somebody would like to bring mm -hmm. it forward out of archive, they certainly can do that. We're not opposed to it, but this is just a first pass to kind of do quality over quantity. So this is an ongoing conversation and I'll see if you have any questions or comments about that. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's meaningful. I, I mean, you know, care, uh, metrics and metrics model, it's just like, um, you know, a product. Mm -hmm. Every every product has a life cycle. So <laughs> if bad. some, yeah. So if some metrics and and or metrics model is um you know uh cannot be validated, or which means it's not that useful, which means <laughs> it step into the you know state of the end of the life. Mm -hmm. So I, I I agree on that. Okay. And um, and uh, I also, as you just uh, mentioned, that I would like to add one more column that if this matrix has already implemented on some, you know, tools like GreenLive or Compass or something like that, to let people know, okay, this matrix already deployed in somewhere through some tools or or, or platform. Yeah, and that would certainly make it a candidate for being on the website because it is somewhere. It, it lives in the world. I I mean we agree. Um, and uh, I I I can I can help to do that. I mean to to let my colleague to uh, to check if this metrics has has already 
supported on compass like and like to confirm that yep like that yep and and uh, really and uh, yeah i mean what i mean in compass means it's not just integrate into one specific matrix model this means through the compass line you can select select uh, one or two or whatever as many as metrics as you want you can right. customize thing into one models or just use one metric as you wish Correct. to you know validate your project so that's think, my purpose yep because i think the way you're talking is when people can build their own models on compass it is possible to have a scenario like this where it's not actually in a model that we have defined in a chaos model it's not in a guide it's not in badging but it has mm -hmm. been deployed in compass that is a possibility yep. is that what you're talking about i think that's kind of what you're getting at yep yep and that would be uh, and also uh, in some sorry no no that's fine. fine yeah i mean in some metrics the reason why we cannot use it uh, cannot be you know get some feedback from 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 people or from our chaos members because it needs some specific tools like mm -hmm. uh, license license scanning tools right mm -hmm. some code quality scanning to to tools so in the past few months my team is working on that okay. to connect with uh, some open source tools to support scan to to support uh scanning some license garage sure. The license okay. vulnerabilities so we connect uh, all the open source tools we're not connected with some commercial tools which we have to pay for some money yep. so which means we can provide such uh capacity and to support on this metric this kind of metrics like uh, license coverage or something like that and yep. like spdx Yep. And so in that case, like it's possible that I think license coverage is in a lot of models, perhaps, but in the case that it wasn't, if it's archived and somebody it, it became active, say in a guide or in badging or in compass, we can pull it out of archive and put it back on the main page. That's completely fine. Yeah. It just we would yeah. do it a little bit more. We just need to clean this up a little bit, and so yeah, we we would happily bring it to the archive um, when that when that happens. Okay, um, Elizabeth or Don, do you have any comments on that? I think that all makes sense. Okay, I'm still. I don't know how we talk about. I don't know. I'm gonna wait to to say what I'm going to say until this conversation goes a little longer. So I'm still thinking about how I want to. <laughs> stuck in your head. They can't come out. <laughs> okay. Um, so I just wanted to, because I, um, I don't know if you'd heard this conversation yet, Yahui. So I just wanted to put this in front of you, kind of what we're doing with metrics, and you seem to be on board with it. Uh, would, you please, would you please share this documentation on our minutes so yeah. I can share with it, share with my colleague. Yeah, on it's um, it's here. Oh. <laughs> uh oh, yeah, it's I, time to go. I'm gonna go to bed, you're done. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> That's like a nightmare. Don't get locked in there. <laughs> yeah, don't. Maybe it's, I have to right make a phone call to, to tell IT. <laughs> okay, okay, got it. Yeah, it's just, it's a tab just down below. It's called Metrics Work. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, okay, so then that that leads to then a second question, which is the metrics models themselves. So as you know, on the like we have a lot of metrics models that are published. Mm -hmm. These a little and they're on the website. And similar to the metrics, they are documents that require quite a bit of maintenance. Um, and not all of them yeah, that's are the true. same um, and not all of them are good. And in fact, there's even like a metric model that has, it has no chaos metrics in it. It has all kind of hypothetical metrics. 
So the metrics models, I think, kind mm -hmm. of vary in quality. And so there's discussion about archiving. So don't just we'll walk through this, but there's a discussion about archiving the metrics models in the same way that we would archive metrics, potential metrics, where they would still be available. The pointers would definitely not go away. The GitHub repositories would stay, but we're, we don't like actively build new ones. And I'm, I'm wondering how with Compass these conversations could be brought together. So, um, as I, yeah, I just I, as I just a demo. Yeah, you can see if this metric uh, exactly from or metrics or metrics model as are exactly originally fr from chaos. Mm -hmm. I would mark the thing with uh, powered by chaos. Yes. So, actually, it's triggered me thinking that if we allowed people to create matrix model which uh, originally coming from chaos in compass through the compass lab i just demoed yeah. uh, who would have such um you know uh, access right to declare okay this this matrix model uh, actually originally coming from Chaos, mm -hmm. or I just let you or Elizabeth or Dawn have this right. Okay, three of you just create the models, and I will mark those models with uh, you know powered by mm -hmm. Chaos to right. let people know. Okay, this matrix model already me from Chaos, mm -hmm. right? And so. so yeah, I see that. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm watching what you're doing. I I see there's a, uh, like a balance here that we're trying to, um, have chaos or I'm sorry, have compass. Use that powered by chaos terminology, and then like back reference to a model that is available, and well formed. Yeah, there's value in that. Yeah, um, and if we archive all the models that sends to me, it sends kind of a funny signal that says this is powered by chaos, but they're actually all archived. <laughs> so they're all old. Um, so I, mm -hmm. you go ahead. No, okay. please go ahead. Um, so I'm just trying to think about how we can balance what you're trying to do in compass with what, with trying to relieve the maintenance burden that we have here in chaos on these documents. I think we try, we're trying to like thread that needle. So yeah, Elizabeth. Yeah, so this is kind of where I was getting stuck in my brain. Um, so I think it, it feels like to me, the evolution of chaos is going back to focusing more on the building blocks and letting folks kind of build their own models based on what is pertinent for their needs. And I think like we have talked about kind of shifting toward a more narrative around the metrics models that are developed like through blog posts or guides. And I think so like what Yahui has done has allowed anybody to create a model and then uh, I guess figure out if it's you know, working for them and, and, and answering the questions they want, but like that's, that would be the pathway to then writing a blog post. Like anybody could write a blog post or a, or a, um, a guide, I guess, on how they develop that model and how it, how it helps them in their context. So it, this whole customization thing is like whole next level, I think. And so I, I don't know that I don't know that having an official chaos signal with a metrics model is as important as the metrics building blocks from which they came. Does that make sense? That's just kind of my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe the ones that we do like, we still we put in guides, but they're they're just the ones that we have seen and we like. But I don't know that those need to be a final set. You know what I'm saying? So 
let me take a step back. So what I'm saying is we can still use the powered by chaos information in compass like I really like that and I think it does give it some sort of um, legitimacy you know like yes we've all thought about this this is a thing um, but I would say that they would be better served to be attached to the individual metrics as opposed to the metrics models that's just my opinion hmm. what do you think you mm -hmm. I mean uh, we're, we're not I, we're not I, trying to lead you actually, down actually I share yeah Go ahead. Okay. Uh, actually, I share the same similar thinking with with the database. So, uh, first we maintain a uh, a group of, uh, I mean, a really good metrics as item of the metrics model. So we give them the life cycle of the of each of single metrics to 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 you know identify the, if they are valuable or not. And uh, that's coming from our comments or decisions of chaos. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always maintain such side of really good metrics as item of the metrics models. And uh, and the uh, compass would, uh, you know, implement all these valuable metrics. And uh, Meanwhile, we allow people to build their own and customized metrics model based on those metrics maintained by chaos. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to, you know, to give them any identity that, okay, this metrics model actually uh, composed of the metrics uh, coming from chaos. No, we don't have to mention that. But um, we could tell them, okay, these metrics are actually, you know, uh, defined and maintained by chaos. And um, about metrics model, the same thing. Uh, we also give them or maintain them as a um, product, give them the life cycle. Only the metrics mo model, we think they are valuable. We will give them some identity means are powered by chaos. Otherwise, we don't have to, you know, identify all the metrics models, you know, coming from, uh, they have to, you know, create it by chaos or created by someone else. And we give, the, give this right to other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would rather us kind of focus on, so we have these metrics and, um, if we, you know, if you go back to, to Yahui's, um, the place where you can customize the, especially like with the weights and everything, like, I think that that's where maybe chaos could be helpful is helping someone figure out maybe how to do those weights or what these things mean, you know, more in an, in a, a narrative way, as opposed to a prescriptive, this is a model you should use to do X. Mm -hmm. I I think we should more focus on the how to use the metrics and metrics models. I really like the way of we create practitioner guide. I think that's the way uh, our 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 our, mean, our meaningful thing. Uh, the chaos are, are creating value for for people. So I I think we have finished the. Uh, you know, the phase of create, creating the new metrics or metrics model. We have already stepped into the next phase at mm -hmm. uh, teaching people how to use these metrics and metrics models. So I think the guide plus the implementation by Compass or some other tools, this group of the, uh, you know, we working could help more people bring more values to people. This is great. Um, I'm going to turn to Don here in a second, but um, I feel like this is how we've been talking as well in the board meeting and in the in our meetings. That um, kind of like you say, you know, we, everything has a, a life cycle. All of the artifacts that we have, and um, it's during that life cycle of any artifact that we have that we learn things and. 
the things that we learn are how to move us into that next phase. Um, and so the practitioner guides have come up, I think time and time again, as a more narrative structure to help people think about a handful of metrics that are in front of them. And I don't think we, even though they're not the same, I don't think we could have gotten there without having thought through metrics models, to be honest with you. Um, mm -hmm. Like it's just, it's part of the evolution of what we have. And I, I do think we need to be careful just overall, hey, the lights went on. It's back back to work, Yui. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> that was your break. Um, it's, Maybe in my office late has a heard of my voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I think too, in, in chaos, we do need to be sensitive to what we put out in front of people. So between metrics, metrics models and guides, kind of, you know, consolidating that narrative is really important. Um, we do have, as an example here, and Don, this is where I'll kind of turn to you. We do have these viability metric models that Gary from Verizon had developed. And we had talked about these being potential candidates for what we would call, say, an expert guide. That would kind of have the same structure, I think, as a practitioner guide, but maybe, maybe not. Um, but a guide, more of a narrative guide to help organizations and people think about these slightly more complex and maybe deeper level concepts. And perhaps it's these guides that we would focus on as deployed in Compass. So Don, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Maybe I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that because the, um, in particular, the viability guides are, I would say, a lot of things that you just can't get from Grimoire Lab. So I think like implementing those particular guides in Compass may or may not really work particularly well. Um, just because it's things like it's things like you know governance and strategy and a lot of stuff that you should be thinking about from a viability standpoint, um, but we may or may not have all of the metrics to support them. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this type of guide would be would be appropriate because, um, like the practitioner guides. Um, I like the way that Yahui has done those in OSS Compass because the practitioner guides, like you said, have a very specific format. And the format is here's three to four metrics. Here's a bunch of interpretive stuff. Here are some additional metrics you might want to think about. Um, whereas I think the expert guides are probably going to be, I would nice. say even maybe a little bit less focused on the metrics themselves and more about how to think about a certain thing. So okay. if you go I to um I just you want me to pick a different one, but uh no, that one's fine. That one's fine, okay. I think. Um so if you scroll down like the metrics, uh yeah, okay. I guess they, this one maybe, yeah, pick a different one. Uh maybe the strategy one or strategy. the governance. Okay. <laughs> Google Docs is sometimes annoying. Uh, I just wanted to. I just wanted it's to like, put it away. <laughs> yeah. Like organizational influence, for example, that particular metric is um, nearly. If you click on that metric, it's almost impossible to implement um, because it's. Uh, you know, it's it's looking at um, which members are on the technical steering committee, for example. You can't really pull that from the from the data. Who's on the governing board? Uh, project maintainer roles. Those are things that, um, if you know exactly how a project is structured, you might be able to write something custom to do it. But those are things that you really. Yeah, organizations sponsoring an open source project. So some of these metrics and the viability models are are hard to implement. I mean, maybe we could do some of them. I just think I think the viability one is a bad example. I think I think the viability maybe 
So here's what I think. Viability never should have been a metrics model in the first place, but it's a super important topic and we didn't have anything else for him to do it as. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, he force fit the viability into a metrics model because that's all we had. Um, I think that they're not, I think they're not good metrics models. I, I love the viability stuff and I, I love the content in the, in those metrics models, but I don't think it fits the format very well. Does that make sense? It does. So would they be more like a guide format, do you think? Yeah. 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 An expert guide. And and I yeah. understand your point. I'm I'm beginning to come around to your point. That they are like like the 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 starter or the practitioner guides are just kind of simple metrics that you can put in front of people. Mm -hmm. And I understand now that like the expert guide is like asking somebody to reflect deeply on like governance of as you're in your example and governance of a project which takes a little bit of detailed looking under the hood more than any yeah. piece of software could provide yeah and because the expert guides would be on individual topics that were more complex I don't think we could necessarily have a very prescriptive format for them the way that we do for the practitioner guides because the practitioner guides are easy three metrics interpret them you know, and, and then how do you make improvements is basically the, the structure. And so those are just, those are just super easy. I got you. So but I think these expert guides, I think they would, I think they would vary drastically depending on the topic, which makes them not fit into a template particularly well. I got you. So then honestly, okay. So pretend that like rows 28 through 31, just functional here could become part of a, say an expert guide you know, or some collection of expert guides. I start to look at this list then, and like these, particularly safety and badging, like those are things also probably that are not implementable through a piece of software. And badging, we already have that taken care of through a badging program. So we're really down to just like a handful of metrics models that, would potentially be candidates for that powered by chaos point that you had talked about, Yuhui. So is there a utility, mm -hmm. is there utility in trying to um, maintain those metrics models for you at Compass? Or is that does that just not really matter at this point? I really think uh, no matter practitioner guide, actually I'm really like practitioner guide because uh you 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 tell you you tell people how to manage this project or to or how to observe the uh, project. You have to tell them how to mirror them. Without mirror, uh if you just tell them uh, a guide, it's just like story, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, more a uh, theoretical story. So, uh, and also, if some metrics model, uh, you know, lives kind of far away from metrics or metrics model, which is which are implementable, which means those work are kind of overlap with the to do group. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of work in to-do group just uh, you know produce a lot of meaningful and valuable guide for open source. If we are doing the similar work, what's the difference between those two communities? So we have anchored something in our community, which means all the guide, all stories have to show with some implementable mm -hmm. metrics or metrics model. Mm -hmm. That's my thinking. I like that. That's a really good point. I like the connection with to-do group too. I mean, it's something yeah. that we can bring our expertise to, to that group. Well, and I think, I think so, part of your yeah. point is for the things that don't have, that aren't necessarily implementable, do we do we even do those within the chaos project? Like, is I that see. a, is that a metrics activity in which case it, we should be focused on it or is it a to-do group activity because it's something that's more 
um, more general. Was that your point, Yuhui? Yes, that's mine. I understand. So it's like, a, for example, like if we stick with governance again, like that seems like a, a very to-do groupy topic <laughs> to talk about how to establish yeah. governance. And maybe there's room for collaboration. So if we have an idea, but it doesn't quite fit in chaos, then we could certainly reach out to them and see if anyone wants to collaborate with, with us on that. I don't know that we would have success in saying, hey, to do group, here's some things you should do. <laughs> here's some things you should write. Have fun. Here's see a list. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering then, Elizabeth, if, if part of just kind of you and me, oops, um, going through the metrics work, you know, like this whole stuff, because we're working our way through that. If we could do maybe something similar with the models and just kind of ask ourselves, you know, is it one, I guess, is it worth maintaining a standard definition on the website? Like, do we actually need, for example, this DEI event badging, which is probably deviated quite a bit from our current badging process? You know what I mean? Um, and then which of these are even implementable through a tool like Remore Lab or Augur or Compass? Um, so I look at things like, you know, project awareness probably isn't implementable through through these tools. Um, probably, and that'll probably leave us with only just a like a very small group of metrics models meaning like three or four <laughs> that are implementable. And then at that point, um, Don, not say, asking uh, you to- I, you, I mean, go ahead. sorry, go ahead, you. I, I mean, some metrics, yeah, sorry. Some metrics model, even they are not, they have, even they do not have some direct metrics as the index or uh, to, to, to tell people how to marry them, but they do have some proxy metrics to tell them how to marry them. So there's not always some direct metrics to marry everything. If this metrics model can be married by some some other proxy metrics, yes. I think that's one. So like here we have community service and support a lot of metrics here. And I think this is your point. Is this your point, Yuhui? That like these are proxy metrics for service and support. Yeah, I mean this this metrics model can uh, the metrics in this model they are all impl implementable, but it's I, I could uh, treat it as a special or uh, as a way to define the metrics model. But uh, if one metrics model cannot always have all the implementable metrics, but they do have some recommend proxy metrics, which are implementable, I think that's fine. But if this metrics model, you know, they, they neither have some proxy metrics or direct metrics, why do, do we need to have them or maintain them? Or maybe we cannot name being as a metrics model or just the name being as a, you know, some other term mm -hmm. like a guide or, yeah. or some other things. Yeah, Don, or I mean, whatever your name is, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wish we were interchangeable, but Don is way cooler than I am. Um, I hate to, to, um, interject in this awesome conversation, but we do only have a few minutes left. And I wanted to bring up the fact that daylight savings time is coming and that's going to really push this meeting super, super late for our folks in China. Um, it will be midnight next, uh, the next meeting, I think, because um, it's two weeks from now, right? So I just wanted to maybe see if we could talk about changing this meeting to make it a little more accessible for those folks. Yes, I'm okay with that. Don, I'm guessing you're okay with that as long as it fits your schedule. Yeah, it's sure. Earlier in the day for you. Yeah, earlier in the day is fine. Okay.
Thank you. All my meetings on Thursdays are chaos meetings before uh, before this. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we'll I'll just post something in Slack then to see like a couple of options and we can see what works the best for us if we want. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay. So can I, can I just ask one question is like kind of straight to you. Do you, are you in mm -hmm. favor of archiving the metric models in full? In full what? Sorry. Uh, like, uh, are you in favor of archiving all the metric models? Or do you want to keep some? Not all the metric models. Page? Well, yeah, right I now. I think so. Because we. Mm -hmm. So the idea is, is like right now we have this, right? And because mm -hmm. these are all here, because these are important artifacts that we're putting out in front of people on our web page, they require a high amount of maintenance. Mm -hmm. And so, if we are, uh, so that's that that's that's my plan. So my first uh, my first step is implement all the all the uh, valuable metrics in chaos. Yes. Agreed. Through through compass, that's my first step. And um, and uh, as you know, I start from a practitioner guide. I mean, metrics from this guide. After I finish all the metrics uh, implementation in Compass, I will start from uh, the chaos metrics model. So let me know which metrics model you think they are still, you know, have some value. Or okay. they are important. I can I can I can define the th schedule. Okay. And uh, as you know that there's something some metrics model like activity, service, and support. They they are already been using many many communities. And not only in China but all over the world, mm -hmm. they are meaningful. So. Not metrics model. Uh, be, so what I mean that I, I never have plan to archiving all the metrics model oh. from chaos. But uh, all the metrics model, just like metrics, they have to have some, you know, rules which metrics or metrics model could be existing in chaos, okay. and they all have a life cycle. Okay. So it would be kind of following this path, but for metrics models, like asking questions against the model as to whether or not it should be around. Okay. But I think another, yeah. another, another question would be, is this model um, a candidate for ISO standardization? Because <laughs> if that if the answer is yes, we probably need to not archive it. Yeah. Okay. So Elizabeth, it uh, as like you know that uh, we are collaborating with uh, Open Atom Foundation right now. Yeah. We are doing some, you know, uh, the big uh, inside report, uh, inside report. Okay. Uh, we are using some metrics and metrics model from our chaos. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. This is helpful. We're at the end of time. Let's find a new time to meet. Okay. This is very good. I think there's a lot to kind of think about here because we are trying to maintain a large amount of documentation while at the same time providing support for the folks that are using that. Um, <laughs> it's just a lot of work mm -hmm. on both on both sides, and we're just trying to find the most efficient way. I have to say sorry that I like some, some time to attend the uh, community's work, but uh, I will, you know, push more time, you know, involved into community work to help oh. all guys here. Oh, that's no problem. no problem. I mean, the work you're doing is phenomenal. Like, I can't tell you enough how much it helps guide our thinking. Uh, so this is really helpful. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. have a good evening. Okay. And have a good rest of the day, folks. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.